What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today I have a little bit of a DIY video for you. It's not directly fish tank related, it's indirectly fish tank related. Um, so if you like a good DIY video like I do, you might enjoy this anyway. So what we're working on is I'm taking my chimney mantle. It's a stone laid chimney from 1928 is when this house was built. And it doesn't have a wooden mantle. So the top of this chimney is very rough, it's uneven. Um, and when I'm talking uneven, it's about an inch unlevel from end to end. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're going to be building a wooden frame, uh, setting it on top. We're going to silicone the frame into place, and then we're going to pour concrete inside that frame to try and get a level surface. And then we're going to build a wooden mantle on top of that so that I can put two 20 gallon long aquariums up there for future videos. So like I said, indirectly uh, related to aquariums, but you might enjoy the video anyway, so it's going to be a quick one, but here we go. Alright guys, so if you take a look at this board real quick, you can see that it's real wavy on the bottom. It's not perfectly straight, and that was cut to contour these stones because these stones were not laid in there properly or flat at all. Um, and I had to do that in order to get it level. And then once I had the frame built, I siliconed it in place so it wouldn't move when we got ready to make and pour the concrete. So here you're going to see that we've got the concrete mixed and laid in. And I've been working it around for a little bit, trying to get it as flat and level as possible. Alright, so now if we take a look at this board, you can see that on the right hand side, we have a big gap. And as we come across, the board is touching in the middle right there. And then over here on the left side, there's another gap. So we need to find a way to contour that stone so that we can uh, get everything lined up perfectly. So we're going off this gap right here. This is an inch and a half gap. So I took a three inch round. This is a lid off of a Tetra fish food. And I drilled a hole right in the middle of it. And the reason for drilling a hole in the middle of it is so that you can take a pen or a pencil or a utensil of some kind and put the tip of that right in the middle of that round so the tip sticks out. And what you're gonna do with that is you're gonna take it and you're gonna roll it along the contour in the back and that's going to make a perfect line in this case inch and a half out from that wall um, and that's going to give you your contour for cutting so you can see I already marked it out right there so I'm going to go ahead and cut it here and then I left a little bit of extra material right here so that way I could make sure that I would have enough material and I wouldn't have an extra gap there um, so if we look in the back now, I've cut the contours, and you can see how even that shadow is in the back there, and uh, how clean that cut came out. And it looks a little wavy, but like I said, it's hand-laid chimney, so uh, that gap's a pretty consistent three-quarters of an inch. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the edges, and I'm going to notch them out right here and on the other side to be able to slide this back in a little more. Alright, so we got those edges notched out and uh, you can see right here we got good fitment and there was a spot right here, it was a little over inch and a half so I could put another board in there but you're never going to see it um, but I couldn't go any further back because we'd have clearance issues with that stone right there. There's only about a quarter of an inch there so um, you're never going to see that unless you're seven foot tall so uh, I'm not really worried about it that much, but um, as you can see here, the final fitment is pretty clean. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could go back there with some silicone and fill that in. I'm not really worried about it, so I think I'm going to leave it as is, but overall that's a pretty clean finish if you ask me. Um, so basically what I have to do now is just get some trim, and we're going to wrap trim around the edges and the front. Um, to hide all of that woodwork and silicone that you see there. And uh, I actually went out and I grabbed it so that we could actually see uh, what it's going to look like. So if I can get it set up here properly. Um, yeah, about like that. That's about what it's going to look like. And you can't see any of the work underneath it unless you're like three feet tall and you really get down and look up at it. But I'm actually going to paint it black up in there. So you would never be able to see it anyway. Um, but overall, I think it's going to turn out really nice. I made sure my wife loved this leaf 
uh, print trim. It's going to match the pothos plants and all the plants in the aquariums really well. Um, she was thinking about painting those leaves green, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, I think that would be kind of interesting. All right, guys, so before we go nailing all that stuff up there, uh, what we're going to do is I've got some other materials here, so I'll go over what this is real quick. So this is stainable wood filler. Sometimes when you put your nails in, the gun or the nail uh, will do a little bit of damage to the wood, so you can fill that wood back in with this. Um, it's stainable, so it'll match the color of the wood with the stain that you put on it. So very good to have. And then once you put this on and it dries, you're going to want to sand it down. This is a 220 and 400 grit sandpaper. Um, so once you get it all filled in and sanded and it dries, we're going to come back and we are going to apply some wood finish. This is natural 209, so this is going to look really good. Uh, essentially, this is going to look just like this or this. Both of these are a natural 209 coloring. Um, so it's going to turn out pretty nice. Um, so once we get that on there, um, you're going to let it dry. Make sure you're wearing some gloves because uh, if stain is good at one thing, it's staining anything it touches, including skin. And you put that on with a pad or a rag or something like that. So uh, we got those pads there. And then you're going to want to do a couple coats of that sanding in between coats. Um, so once you do that, usually I do three coats. Uh, we're going to come back through with a uh, polyurethane clear coat protectant. So uh, we'll get that on there, do a coat or two. I got two brushes so I can do two coats. And uh, that should seal it. And usually you want to sand in between those coats as well. Um, and everything's going to come together pretty well. So we'll go ahead and we'll finish up here. All right, guys, so what I'm using here is a brad nailer, 18-gauge uh, brad nails. And if you don't know that, they're very tiny. So I'm trying to look under the shelf so I can line up where I'm shooting the, uh, the nails into that uh, wooden frame that I built there. So that's why it looks like I'm holding the gun weird, and it's very awkward to handle it at this height. Um, so, but yeah, I'll show you here what the, uh, the nails look like. You can see they come in little strips, real tiny. Uh, they just drop into the gun and that's how you use those. So once I got all those in, uh, I'll show you here. Pretty solid, pretty happy with that. Um, if you look at the top, there's two different ways these nails can go in. They can either go in flush or they can drive in deep. And like this right here is a deep one and this right here is a flush one. And there's two different things. The flush ones, uh, you're not going to be able to fill those in so you're going to have to punch them in a little harder. Um, and the deep ones you can use wood filler. Um, so it's much easier to fix the deep ones. Um, so you just take the wood filler and you put a little tiny dab on top of it. And then I'm wearing gloves, you don't have to. Um, but you just take it and you press it in, rub it in there. And kind of wipe the excess off a little bit. And then that's going to fill in that hole. And you give it a couple hours to dry. Once it dries... Uh, you can just sand it smooth, and you'll never even know that that hole was even there. So nobody will be able to see those holes. You're not going to have anything that can get in those holes because you filled them, and it's going to be stainable, and everything will turn out pretty nice. So as you can see here, I went ahead and added a thin coat of black plastic dip underneath there to try and eliminate the clear appearance of that wood frame so that you wouldn't see it with the trim on there. All right guys, at this point, so I cut the pieces of trim work and I glued the corners and I'm now using those little tiny brad nails to attach the trim. Um, I did lose a little bit of that footage, but this is what it looks like when everything is together. So the corners are pretty tight, fairly nice gap. I did use super glue for this. Uh, I was gonna use wood glue, but I didn't have any, so the super glue is gonna work good. Um, did have to notch that a little bit to get it to fit over that lip and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sand down these spots now uh, with some sandpaper get those taken care of and I also have to fill in the little holes from attaching the trim so I'm going to do both of those here next As you can see here, I'm just going to run this 400 grit paper over this real quick. It um, doesn't take a whole lot at all. This stuff's pretty soft and the excess comes right off and you can see the hole is filled in. Um, and that's pretty much going to disappear if you get a darker stain. Uh, it's a little rough right here 
fill these holes in. Um, but just a little bit of touch-up work is going to cover that up and make it look real nice. So here I'm going through with a little bit of that wood filler, and I'm filling in all those holes. Uh, make sure I get every single one of them working in pretty good, and then we're going to sand down all of the high spots on the other stuff we did the other day. So we'll go ahead, we'll go through all that, get all that taken care of. Now the ones that I did going around are already dried, so I went ahead and sanded all those down, make them nice and smooth. And then here what I'm doing is I'm taking that sponge that I showed you guys before, and we're just going to dip it in the, the stain and just wipe it on fairly liberally. And then uh, you can already see the, the change there of the color. So let's we'll go ahead and we're going to put it across all the surfaces for one first coat. Get it around all the trim pieces. Make sure you get all the edges, get a good even coat on there. All right, so we got our three coats of stain on. So we're gonna let it dry four to six hours before we put a coat of uh, clear coat on there. So uh, these are both pine. You can kind of see this one got a little bit darker than this one, but that's okay because I wanted this to be a little bit lighter because my wife's gonna come through with uh, brown paint on the vines. I'm thinking black in these dots and then green leaves. She's gonna paint these after we clear coat it. And I think that's gonna look really good coming all the way around. Um, I have a little bit of a picture here that we got the idea from. I'll post that so you guys can see it, but I'm just gonna wait for that to dry and then we'll get a clear coat on there. All right, so if we get up close here, you can see that that first couple coats there is uh, is dry so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna come up behind it with some polyurethane uh, and this is gonna seal and protect the wood from any water or anything that gets on there and it's a pretty good idea to do that especially since we're gonna be putting aquariums up here so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a couple coats of this on we'll just put one good coat on first to start make sure you get all the way around get all your surfaces good even coat on there All right, so we got a good even coat on there, and we're going to let this sit up for a little while. You can still see it's a little wet, and the top actually has a very nice sheen to it. You can kind of see the reflection of the stone in it, so that's actually looking pretty good. Um, overall, pretty happy with the way it came out. I am going to take this 400 grit sandpaper and sand down the surface, um, make it nice and smooth, remove any imperfections up here, um, and then hit it with one more coat of the polyurethane. Uh, to make it really shine. All right, so the second coat's on there. It's probably about halfway dry. Um, so you can see we still got some good shine on the front here. And we got some good shine on the top there. I am probably going to hit this with one more light buff with the 400 grit sandpaper. And then probably use a little bit of furniture polish and shine that up and make it look real nice. Um, and then we'll come through afterwards and we'll paint the little leaves and vines there but overall I think this came out really good uh, video turned out a little bit longer than I thought it was going to but you know a good job takes a little bit of time I guess so like I said in the beginning of the video uh, the reason I'm doing this is inadvertently for an aquarium stand um, probably one of the weirdest ones I've built uh, but basically we're gonna be taking two 20 gallon longs we're gonna put one here, and we're gonna put one here, and it's gonna result in a couple of different videos. We're gonna do a video on how to set up a dirtied aquarium, which would be like the Wallstad method, where you use um, organic soil as your nutrient source for your plants. So I'll show you guys how to set one of those up the right way, and make sure you get it flourishing really well. And then we're also gonna set one up over here, but this one over here is just gonna have uh, my favorite substrate, which is black diamond blasting sand, which is what's in this tank here. Uh, with just liquid fertilizers and root tabs. Um, and we're basically going to compare the two with the growth of the plants over time. So we're going to set them up about the same time, use the same plants, and we'll be able to do direct comparison. Uh, no CO2. We're just going to be doing natural uh, low-tech aquariums. Um, nothing crazy with lighting or anything like that. And I'll be able to give you guys good comparisons as things go on. So that's basically going to be some of the videos that are going to come out from that. Um, be able to do updates on it throughout, you know, the next couple months. And, uh, 
I think it'll be really good. Something cool to learn, something cool to teach you guys if you're interested in stuff like that. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching Trafish Aquatics. As always, links in the description down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.